everybody. Welcome back to Sound Factory channel. This is Robo, your music instructor, Sound Factory studio. Today, we're going to talk about improvisation for beginners and intermediary or intermediate people. This is a request from a lot of people. There are so many that I can't mention everybody's name. So whoever requested for improvisation basics so that you can build up, this is the lesson for you. It's going to be in three parts where I'll be playing most of the stuff in key C sharp major. But I've said that on the skill degree, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to choose one to six, but I'll do a permutation or a pairing where I'll use one and two as a lesson on its own. Three and four will be the part two and then five and six so that you can have enough time and spacing to know that uh, how to use the various scale degree position on a major scale triad or like the degree scale of a major scale, how you can work on each chord when you are supposed to improvise. So this will be uh, aimed towards working on basic stuff and intermediate or beginner level. And maybe some people also see it to be advanced depending on your level of play. So let's get to the lesson. As I said, it's going to be in three parts. This will be the first part where we focus on C sharp major as our main key, but keeping the first and second degree as one and two to be our improvisation point for this lesson. Let's get to the lesson right now. Okay, I'm using key C sharp major as my main key for the lesson, but I'm going to take the degree scale that is uh, one and two. So when you have a C sharp major scale, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or the one repeating. So you have seven degree scales. So I'm going to choose one and two, that is do and re or one and two as people will call it. So you have to know how a major scale look like. If you don't know a major scale, there's a chart that I just showed down there showing how a major scale looks like from a C sharp perspective. Or you can use C as a reference and then bring it to C sharp. So I'll put a C major scale as a reference and you can trace the note to a C sharp. Okay, so we are dealing with chord one. The basic triad of a chord one is do mi so then for a two you have re fa la i'm saying this one more time that the most beautiful secret to improvisation is with the power of the major skill if you understand the major skill at least two octave apart that is the secret to all improvisation technique then you can play any solo in the world so we are going to look at the major skill diagram so if you have an octave from do to do, you have a um, seven degree note, then repeats the one. In the triad, to form a major scale or a one, our uh, first degree, you have do, mi, so that is. This are the note. I'm playing in this position. If I'm playing here, that is on the, on the fourth fret, fifth string. That's where my root is. If I choose the root here and I'm playing in this degree, then you come to. But to make things easy, I'm going to work in the pentatonic position that is on the sixth fret, six, seven, eight, nine fret. I'm going to work around this region to play the improvisation. Now, another thing you should know is. In the pentatonic shape position where you can build a major scale that is to start improvisation we are not going to use any note on the fourth fifth and sixth string we are going to focus on the third string to the last one most of the notes here are more adequate to use for beginners and intermediary the when you van you when you become an advanced person or you understand the foundation then you can know how to go beyond the third string and move upwards. So I'm going to use one as my demonstration key. So one is C sharp major. And you have the note Do, Mi, So. Right, that's the basic triad. But when you look at the major scale, there are other extensions notes. You have Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La. So there's Re, there's Fa, there's La, and there's T. Meaning any of these notes can be played on the C sharp major when you are improvising. 
no note is wrong get this but some notes are more appropriate to use so we are going to start off the improvisation cycle using the the basic triad notes that is do me and then so so you have an option of choosing the do a me or a so when you are improvising so this will be for beginners let's get to that right now with the backing track Now I'm going to choose the next note, which will be me. And so, so now we know how you can play that do is on the third string, sixth fret. Me is on the second string, sixth fret, and so is on the ninth fret, ninth fret, uh, second string. So these are the common notes you can play when you hear chord one. Now on our two, our two is um, E flat minor, but I use a minor seven for extension reasons. And then I use an added nine on my chord one, so I can break away from the triads and then the minor seven on my two. Okay, so our basic triad for a, a two will be Re, Fa, La. As I said, we are working within the first three strings for our two and our one will be so I'm going to play a backing track which has a one and two playing throughout to demonstrate some of these notes then we can see we step into the intermediate way where you can add extension notes to sound more beautiful let's get to that right now <laughs> So these are the common ways you can play. And there's something in music called permutation, that when you have a chord or in those like three, you have about nine options, because it'll be what you have times, the number of times you move about it, about six to nine ways you can play around. So somebody can choose to play Do as the first note. Somebody will choose to play So. Somebody will choose to play Me. And this is a research I want to work on, the psychology of improvisation or what psychological instincts affect our mind when we are choosing our notes. We'll get to that. So though the chord is the same, somebody will choose S O as a start note, somebody will choose me, somebody will choose Do. So it depends on what you want to choose, but all this work. are some of the common licks you can play when you are working directly with the triadic function where you have do mi so and re fa la now let's look at the major scale in the chart again that's two octave you can see that when you play do to do it's a stance to a knife which is re beyond the octave because it's the octave that's why jazz musicians do stella that goes beyond that so if you listen to the backing track i used a c sharp added ninth and that note is this ray now let's see how we can add ray to our notes we already have that is add ray now when you come to chord two um, we I played a minor seventh, 
So when you take the ray to ray, the notes that comes just before ray is do. So that is the minor seventh note. So I'm adding an added ninth on chord one. And I'm adding a minor seventh note. So when you have a re and you add a do note to it, that's your minor seventh. I'll put the scale or the music cherry behind that later. Then when you add a re to your one, that is an added ninth. Now let's use the element of re on one and then do on our two and see how the progression will sound. see the added knife notes now it suddenly make us sound more beautiful instead of just sticking to the do mi so or re fa la now when, when we look at the major scale too we can add the major seventh note so on the major seventh scale our seven degree note on the major scale is t plus one two three four five six so how about adding t to our chord one then, but we will still maintain our do for our two. So now we are going to, in our chord one, we've added re and T as part of our improvisation note. But with our two, we are sticking to our uh, minor seven note on, and see how we will sound now. <laughs> See, this note is just coloring up our chord to make it sound more beautiful and interesting. So these are the fundamental and the intermediate way you can improvise on our chord one and two. Now I'm going to play a random solo. Whatever I, I play, you try to imitate that on your own and see some of the possible things. Sometimes you have connecting notes where you can connect a note that does not belong to any of the chord, but it's like an auxiliary note. To join that so that the chord does not become static or you keep playing. Or you can add passing note to make it more advanced and make it more beautiful. So let's add some of this passing note. So I'll play a one bar progression. You try and imitate the sound too. Try it. Now I'm going to chord two.
right, family. So this is it for introduction to improvisation, where I focused on a key C sharp major, and I used my first degree and second degree. That's one and two, or do and re, and we learn elements that we can add when we are improvising to sound very beautiful. The part two is going to come out. So I said this lesson is going to be in three sessions or in three series. First one, I'm dealing with one and two. Next lesson, I'm going to deal with two, uh, with three and four. Then the last lesson will be on five and six. So you can see how anytime you have a given chord out of one to six, you know the kind of elements to improvise on. Thank you for watching. If you're new, click on the subscribe button, massage the like button, click on the subscribe button down there. Do you see that? The red button there and share these links to others so this channel can grow. See you next time. Bye.